Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Prickly Pooh and welcome to day 266 of A Year of Change. And the end of week... I don't remember what the week number was. I should have looked that up before I started this. Anyway, it's the end of a week for us. Um, this week I have made a little bit more progress. Um, I'm getting into more of a pattern now. Um, a better schedule, just sort of uh, working days and working early mornings, actually. Um, so I found that I'm getting up around 5.30 or 6 in the morning and doing my treadmill and then having my breakfast and going off to work. But I've been leaving work, actually, um, you know, because normally what I would do is during lunch I would go up the hill if I was parked up on the hill and drive back down and then usually just sort of wander around and not do anything. But... Because this is this is a very different job, I'm much busier throughout the run of the day, so I've cut way back on my coffee intake. Um, normally, I'll grab one in the morning, and which before I get into this though, I did notice that in one of the videos, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I was going through a lot of it. Sorry, very very dry, and can't help but get talking, and you just get, get like. Mm. But anyway, so uh, yes, cut way back on my coffee would take. So when I'm working now, um, because I'm just I'm much busier, it's not the same sort of task. I'm actually getting up and going over here and doing something over here, then going over there and doing something over there and processing things and filing things and everything else. So I find that I don't really have time to sit and just sort of drink coffee after coffee after coffee all day. So what I've been trying to do this week is get my coffee in the morning before I go to work. And then usually some point during the day, I'll get a second one. And then after that, usually after lunch, well, during lunch, I actually leave the building and go and have an actual lunch. And I've just been bringing two or three pieces of fruit with me, and I go out, sit in my car, and have my lunch in there. It's not creepy. Shut up. It's okay. No one's staring at it. Well, other people do it too, I think. But I don't want to drive anywhere because then I'll get stuck on the hill again and I'm too lazy. So um, I go out, have my lunch, and generally it's two or three pieces of fruit. So I'm actually having something in the middle of the day. So, and then after that, I just drink water through the rest of the day. I don't have another coffee after lunch. And I've been trying to get into this just because I want to sort of cut back more on the amount of sugar and caffeine that I'm taking in more than anything else. Um, and it cuts back a little bit on the calories. But what I found is that when I come home at night, um, at the end of the day, I'll have a reasonable dinner and then I'm usually done. If I do have a snack, then it's usually another piece of fruit or something. So it has helped a great deal. And... I know that, I mean, I've talked about this before, I've been on night shifts for forever, and it's always been difficult to try to, even just logging things on my fitness pal, because you're not sure if you go sleep to sleep, or if you go dawn to dusk, or if you go midnight to midnight, anything like that, and when we first started this, we were going to go midnight to midnight, just because it's much easier that way, and although it's not perfect, at least everyone was on the same page. What I find, though, is that working daytime, it's so much easier to stay on track with food. And I knew it was difficult when I was working overnights and evenings. It was a little bit easier. Overnights are horrible. I mean, and it's we've talked about that before as well, that you people do gain weight. There are uh, people that work overnight are much more inclined to be obese than people who work the daytime. So um, just being in that daytime schedule, sort of following other people, like everyone goes to lunch at the same time. So it's not just sort of a, okay, well, this is my time to go. So I'm going to go and get what I can because I need to come back and do work. Everyone leaves. The work stops for that hour and, well, it staggers, but you know what I mean. It stops for that hour, everyone le the hour, everyone leaves, and so there's that regimen to it, which has been very, very helpful. So um, I've gotten to, you know, having a regular breakfast, having a regular lunch, coming home, and having a reasonable supper so that I'm not, you know, I don't have a thousand calories left for the end of the day. I have, you know, seven or eight hundred maybe. Um, well, I'm going to say anywhere between six and eight hundred for the or six and nine hundred for the rest of the day which isn't bad so that i'll have my supper when i come home um so usually by six or seven that's done and then maybe around 10 or 11 i'll have something but it's always something that i don't want to have anything really really heavy so just usually fruit or vegetables or something like that trying to stay as healthy as i can and part of that as well is that um i'm not sure when you're watching this but for me this is mid-december i have another two weeks to go I really want to hit my halfway point by then, and it's not enough for me to say, okay, well, I'm going to really sort of power through this thing and starve myself, um, but being on this schedule has helped, and um, again, been sneak peeking throughout the week, and I'm on track that I should hit my halfway point by the end of the year, which would be nice. 
um, the end of the calendar year again, by the end of December. There we go. Um, but as far as, my, well, I'll get to my treadmill in a second, but as far as my schedule goes, that has been really, really helpful. So any of you that are working nights or overnights or evenings or anything like that, um, if you can, I mean, obviously you've probably tried, but if you go, no, I like the night shift. Everything's good. I like the nightlife. I like to boogie on the, anyway, the, it, it does help a great deal being on the daytime or, or being working during the daytime, I should say. I don't know what it is. It's, I mean, it's helped me anyway, that there's more of a schedule to it. So um, I'm waking up at the same time. I'm going to bed roughly at the same time. And I know when my meals are. So being on track like that, like the first week I knew it was going to be rough and it was really fucking rough. It gained. But then I got back on track. Things are fine. I'm finding a nice little uh, schedule that I'm adhering to. And it's been working out really well. Plus cutting back on the amount of uh, coffee and stuff like that that I've had. Just to sort of get rid of, well, the stuff at work has sugar already put into the little packets. So cutting back on the amount of sugar has helped quite a bit. Having a reasonable lunch so that I'm not just starving throughout the day. And so I'm having those regular intervals, I think, has helped a great deal. So um, as far as my treadmill goes, um, this was the week that I finished off uh, walking for five minutes and then jogging for one. And then walking, well on every five minute mark. So technically it's been walking for four minutes and jogging for one, but um, on the five minute mark, then I've been jogging for one minute. And I still haven't looked at whether or not I can program my treadmill, which I probably can. Um, but what I think I'm gonna do, I've been sort of going back and forth, trying to figure out, should I really just go down to four minutes and then go down to three minutes and then two minutes, um, but then constantly fiddling back and forth with this, or should I go the other way and say, I will walk for five minutes and then jog for a minute and a half or two minutes. Um, I'd like to probably start with something small, so 30 second intervals. So I'm already doing it for one minute. I know I can do that. And on Friday, I checked everything and I just wanted to see how long I could go before I started really like getting to a point where I couldn't do it anymore. And I hit two minutes and I was still okay. So maybe I'll start with two minutes and go from there. I just don't wanna to go too far and then say, okay, it's a little too much, I'll back things off. So maybe I will do 30 seconds. If I do every 30 seconds, um, there's a couple problems with that. Um, at some point, I'm going to go, you know, right now I'm doing it for one minute and 30, or one minute. So next week, I would walk for five, go for one minute, or at the five minute mark, then I would jog for a minute and 30 seconds. And then the next five minute mark, go that way. So after eight weeks, you're going, you know, minute and a half, two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes, stuff like that. So after eight weeks, I should be just every, you know, four and a half minutes and then five minutes. It should be fine, but there is a big difference between walking for a little bit and then jogging for five straight minutes, and then as you know, and comparing that to jogging for 60. Because when you think about it, I'm still going four minutes 30 seconds, walking for 30 seconds, then four minutes and 30 seconds. There is still a rest there, and then all of a sudden it jumps to 60. So I don't know how that's going to go. I'd still like to do that. I think that I'll be able to do that. Um, the other alternative that I have is starting at the five minute mark and seeing how far I can go. And then once that stops, walk for another five minutes and then stop and walk for five minutes so that eventually I might be walking for five, jogging for five, walking for five, jogging for five and build it up that way. So I'm going to try just every 30 seconds for the time being, because I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, and it sort of keeps that mindset going. Um, because if I just do jog for five, walk for five, jog for five, I don't feel like I'm really, getting as much. I don't know why. It probably all evens out in the end. My main goal, of course, is by the end of this year, um, by day 365, that I'll be able to jog for the full 5k. Um, which I noticed that when I'm doing this, because I'm doing it for an hour still, um, it's averaging out to around six kilometers, which I'm going to keep doing. I'm not going to stop it and say, oh, it's 45 minutes, but I've done my 5k. Um, I may, st I'm just, I still wanted to keep doing that for an hour. Um, and then eventually I'll be able to jog for that full 5K, which is going to take probably 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Then I'll feel comfortable cutting back on the time um, just so I can get that done and give me an extra 15 minutes in the morning. Things will work out that way. So um, not much else has happened this week. There's no real spectacular updates. Um, I have noticed as well, though, once I hit my halfway point in a couple of weeks, hopefully, um, I do need a new pair of shoes because my jogging shoes that I use for the treadmill are pretty much worn out. They've been worn out for a while, um, just the back of it. 
The uh, no, I won't show them because they're kind of gross. Um, the back of them is worn out. I think they're a little too small to begin with, and I think that might be the problem. But at that point, then I'm comfortable saying, all right, I've lost half my weight. Um, it's time for a new pair of shoes for jogging, and then the gym thing as well. I might do that. But I do. I may postpone that just for the fact that I kind of need new clothes in general because I'm still wearing, aside from the shirts, the jeans and the pants that I'm wearing are the ones I was wearing when I started this. So they're starting to look a little weird <laughs> when you've lost, like uh, at this point, almost 70 pounds. There's there's a noticeable difference between the clothes that I'm wearing and the clothes that I, you know, that I should be wearing. Um, everything's much baggier. They don't seem to fit right. Um, I've got my belt cinched as tight as I can go, which probably just looks weird, but I keep everything, like I still have... I'm not going to tuck all my shirts in and go, hey, and have my belt up to my nipples. It's the shirts I have. I have like an undershirt and then my regular shirt. So it's it covers all the grossness. But um, just the fact that even now, at my belt, I, it's, I don't, it's like a, a weave, like a woven, weave did, did, did a wove did belt, and it's very springy. Um, but it's wrapped almost the entire way around me again. So it's going, like I'm buckling it here, and then the end of it's wrapping around almost to the to the back of me again. And no matter how tight I get it now, um, it's still not fixing the problem. <laughs> so I need to buy some new clothes. Because eventually what's going to end up happening is that my pants are just going to fall down. Um, I mean, the belt should keep them up, but it just, it always feels like I'm still constantly adjusting. And it's getting to a point now where it just looks like I'm playing with myself all the time. I'm not grabbing up my bits and everything when I'm in front of people, but just you're constantly like sort of looping your fingers in the your belt hooks and pulling up your pants and it just kind of looks weird because you know people are going you should probably buy better clothes um i mean this new team that i'm on none of them really know i'm sure that they've seen me before at some point but none of them really know um that i like i'm wearing the same clothes that i was when i was 325 pounds so um that might be something that i spend some money on first my first real investment <laughs> spending money is getting new clothes and my own, my new jogging shoes, my own shoes. I've been borrowing someone else's shoes this entire time. They've been mad. They want them back. Um, but I think that's a nice little, good, there's your reward. Get some clothes that fit properly. Get some shoes that you can use. And, you know, it, they aren't going to cause, because I've got blisters all over the place. Um, just on my feet. But I've taken to actually tucking a sock in the back of the shoe so that when I'm running my heel, the back of my foot isn't right up against the hard plastic. I may have talked about this before. I don't know. But that's my goal, really, for the next couple of weeks and get myself sort of a, a New Year's Eve present or a Christmas present of some sort. I don't think I'm going to hit it by Christmas. Um, but I still, well, you know what? No, I, no, I probably won't. But by the end of the year, once I hit my halfway point, that's my reward is some new clothes, um, mainly just pants um, and jeans. Because even the jeans now, it's... It, they look ridiculous. If I didn't have a shirt covering everything, um, it would look pretty bad. Because it looks like, you know those little sacks of money from old tiny things where they would have the drawstring? That's what it looks like. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. It's like having just, like, uh, scrubs. Like having scrub pants with no one in them and tying them as tight as you can. How there's that little, it gets all bunched up. That's what they're starting to look like, which is kind of weird looking. So I wanted to sort of get clothes that fit me properly, which... As shallow as it may be, makes me, people feel better. It is going to make me feel better because I'm not going to be all baggy and gross and everything else. I'm still going to be gross, but I'm going to be better, less grosserister, less grosserister, and bestestest times. Those are real words that we can use now. Um, but yeah, trying to get, I want to get to a point where, um, you know, I mean, I, I do look like I'm wearing just someone else's clothes at this point. So. Which is a shame because I spent quite a bit of money to get the pants the last time. Because had to go to a because that's how big I was. I was I still am big. I understand that. But at the time, I had to go pretty much to a specialty store where they don't even have um, like an inseam on it because they just have the waist, and then every inseam is like seventy-two inches long. So what they do is they measure you right there. They hem them, and then like within a half an hour or an hour. You go back and you buy them because I just, I could not buy clothes in the store. And I don't even know what my waist size is right now. Um, when I bought these and these, like my jeans were really, really tight. 
Um, they're that springy stuff. They're really, really, really tight. And um, I bought a size, one or two sizes smaller than I really should have because I didn't want to admit that I'd have to go into the 50s for my waist size. Um, so, yeah. So they've gone, so that'll sort of, if that sort of opens things up a little bit that way as well. The jeans I was wearing were, uh, and still am really, are 48, but they have that little elasticy thing. So it technically goes out to 52. And even then they were just like uncomfortably tight. That, and we've all done it. When you wear your clothes, like your jeans, especially way, way too tight throughout the entire run of the day. And you're just like, uh, everything hurts. And then at the end of the day, you have that crease that goes all the way around. Yeah, 48 stretchy, springy jeans. So I don't know what my waist size is right now. Still don't have a, a paper clip I was going to say, which made no fucking sense at all. I still don't have a measuring tape. Um, but when I do go to get clothes, I'm going to be able to go and find out what my waist size is um, just by trying on different things. I have a rough idea. It's probably still big. It's probably still around 44, I'm guessing. It's probably higher than that. <laughs> But um, I'm going to guess, oh, for those of you that don't understand, you're going 40, how fucking big is 44? Um, that is uh, just inches around, I think. Yeah, I was going to say centimeters, but that would be tiny. Ow, just bit myself. Ow. Ah, okay, anyway. Um, so, yeah, at my biggest, I was over 50. At my biggest, actually, I did, I do remember measuring myself, and um, my tape measure stopped at 60. So I don't know how big it was. To give you an idea, yes. And that is something um, I've been debating as well. I know this is going, okay, we're, we're good. We're still under 20 minutes. Um, I do have a picture of me from the waist up um, at roughly 315, 325, somewhere in there. Um, and so I'm saving that, though, because I'm not quite ready to do a new one. I'm going to take another one when I hit my halfway point. Um, I originally was going to do one every five pounds, but that went nowhere. Um, so I'm going to take one when I hit my halfway point, and then probably once I hit my goal, then I'm probably going to be safe enough to post them. Um, I'm not going to post that now, because there are people that know me, that watch this, and I don't. I want to keep them as friends. So I'm not going to show myself, because that's gross. But anyway, um, yes, I have no idea what my waist size is now. Um, I know it was over 60 at one point. So having a jean size, a springy jean size of 48, which generally means it expands out to 52 or more that are still super, super tight. Like I had to breathe everything in and suck my gut in and lay down and just like fight to get the zipper up. Um, yeah, that's just so that I just, it was, I remember that being a horrible, horrible day. Um, obviously not enough for me to do anything about it, but getting to that point when I thought I'm going to have to go into the 50s in order for me to actually wear anything proper um but the ones i mean they just they kind of look ridiculous on me now so i need to get a proper pair of clothes proper pair of pants <laughs> pair of clothes just one pair of clothes i'm gonna wear the same thing every day just like i do with this and i'll just wear this every single day um but yeah those are some of the things i'm looking forward to uh, this week has been pretty good um i have made some more progress so i think in i think in the next couple of weeks i should or at the very end of December anyway, I should hit my halfway point. And that's my main goal. And I'm very, very close now. And as long as I stay on track the way I've been going, it should be good. I did splurge a little bit today and had a bit of a binge. Um, not calorie-wise, but sodium-wise. Because I broke down and I bought pickles. I haven't had them in a very long time. In a very long time. Not the very long time. Um, so, but again, only had three. So I could eat the entire jar, though, which my sodium levels now, I've already gone over for the day. That's gone completely, but it's still better than going after cake. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to say it's better than going after cake in my head. Logically, it's better than going after cake. But other than that, anyway, um, I think that's pretty much it. So we will start a new week tomorrow, um, and we're probably going to do a bit of a change as well. Nothing major, but um, one is sort of get back on track because we sort of skimmed over the protein that we've been talking about or that we had intended on talking about because things went all haywire all week. So I want to sort of get back on track with that um, and then, you know, do my way in and really find out what the official verdict is and see how far I need to go for the next couple of weeks because I get two weeks left and then I think I'll be good because um, two weeks it would be the 29th of December where I am. Um, where I am. So 29th of December everywhere in two weeks. Um, but depending on when you're watching it, I mean, you know what I mean. Time's all fucked up everywhere. 
Um, so I have until the 29th, I think, at that point. Two more weeks, I should be able to reach my goal. He's very, very close as of today. So I'll do my official weigh-in tomorrow, and then I'll know exactly where I stand. Kind of go from there. But for right now, I'm going to leave this video here. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please poke the like button for me. And in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.